Today, ab separations, how to self-check, the two best exercises to start with, and the one technique we should all be using throughout our day to support our abs, and by default, our entire posture. Ab separation can be experienced by young, old, males, females, high-level athletes, and those who are unfit. A viewer wrote asking if the ab exercises work for those with separated ab muscles, something called diastasis rectus abdominis or diastasis recti. What a fantastic question. So today, ab separations, how to self-check, the two best exercises to start with, and the one technique we should all be using throughout our day to support our abs and by default our entire posture. Everything is timestamped so you can access and re-access the sections that interest you. Let's jump in to what an ab separation is. An ab separation is a gap between the left and the right sides of the rectus abdominis muscle. Starting with the illustration's far left picture, we see that the rectus abdominis has a left and right side and the line down the middle is connective tissue. Moving over one shows an ab separation that's below the belly button. The middle picture depicts an ab separation around the belly button. Next, the ab separation above the belly button and the furthest to the right is an open separation running the entire length. When the separation measures a little over an inch or 2.5 centimeters, it's often measured by two finger widths, it's considered a separation worthy of focusing on closing because continued abdominal pressure that we place on those ab muscles will only weaken it over time. Reasons a separation can come on, age, weight gain, you're a top level athlete and you're exerting yourself, heavy weight lifter, do a sport, that does a lot of torque, there are lots of ways that our abs can become weaker in one section or all the way up and down. For sure, pregnancy, postnatally, when you get up and start doing things before your abs and pelvic floor are fully healed. The most common way to check is to lie on your back and bring your heels as close to your buttocks as you can. You'll make sure your back is nice and flat. Using your hand with the fingers pointing down, your palm is facing towards you. You place your fingers on the spot you would like to check. You apply a bit of downward pressure. Hold your fingers there. I always begin at the belly button. You then roll your head and shoulders upward, slightly off the floor. And if it's more comfortable, you can support your head and neck with your other arm. As you roll your head and shoulders, you will notice the two sides coming together. If there's a nice tight resistance that kind of presses your fingers upward because those two sides are coming together and the connective tissue is strong, fantastic. If all the checks that we do are the same, you'll use the Simplify Self Care ab exercises as protective maintenance. So that's how you check. If you feel a gap of two finger widths or more, make a note of how many fingers fit in there. Three, four, you're gonna take the same hand, you're gonna move it up two finger widths, go two finger widths above the belly button. Repeat, rolling up, check it out, figure out how many finger widths, if any, and then release. The next check is four finger widths up. Same thing, position your hand, head roll up, air is coming out as your abs press downward. You'll move two finger widths below the belly button. Make a note of each gap, if any, along the way. There is one more circumstance I'd like you to be aware of, and that is if you do not experience a gap where your fingers press downward, but you experience a bulge or what they call a doming that comes up through the middle, you absolutely do the exercise in a way assuming that you have a separation. And it'd be very good to ask your GP or physical therapist about that doming the next time you visit to help confirm whether or not you have a separation. They can give you guidance. If you feel you have a bit too much insulation around your midriff to be able to check err on the side of using the exercises in a way that's protective. That should be anyway. Everyone should be using the exact position. I'll explain that further. The point is, even if you do not definitively know you have a gap and where it is, your consistency will pay off. Now the two ab exercises when positioned correctly are perfectly fine for a separation that is two to three finger widths. When you start to get broader four or five, I would suggest using what's called a wrap. What you do is you take your one arm, place it on the one side of your body, and then wrap, bring your sides together for additional support, and then 
do the exercise exactly how it's been described in flattening your tummy. As you improve things like hip pain, back pain, better posture, better mobility, and continence can be improved at the same time. I absolutely leverage knowing ab separation is common and incorporated the best exercise to start with for every single person. Anyway, couch potato to top level athlete because this muscle is so undertrained across the board. When you follow how to position yourself and do the action in train this one muscle, you will be protective of your rectus abdominis. I created the weekly videos for your progression, the two and a half minute, then the five and a half minute for fix your neck hump, then the 90 days, five simple exercises. If you're new here and you're focused on an ab separation, you can go right to that playlist and you won't have to wade through all the videos trying to piece together the sequence that I just rattled off. The reason train this one muscle exercise works is because the action of contracting the lower third of your abs draws the rectus abdominis inward. As you contract the lower thirds, exhaling, remember the diaphragm is going to go up, the pelvic floor is going to go up, and you are having a slight, ever so slight, rock while you're sitting in the chair of your hips. And because the draw is up and inward, you are not pushing against the abdominal cavity and, and applying pressure in the opposite direction. Any type of stress or push is actually going to push on that and make more of a separation. But when you are training the diaphragm and pelvic floor muscles to draw upward, you're training your rectus abdominis at the same time. If you're trying to close your separation when you do sit-ups, as you come closer, as these two sides come closer, and if you hold your breath, especially if your mouth is not open and you haven't contracted your lower thirds first, what will happen is you're gonna keep pushing and creating that bulge. That bulge is going to weaken and weaken. Same thing for alternating bike crunches, even planks. You want your separation to be closed before you do those. This video will be too long to re-go through that exercise. If you're new here, use the playlist. And when you first go through it, try to resist poo-pooing how simple it looks. I can tell you after almost four decades, yes, going on 40 years of teaching, the work that you do with your breath in the proper fully extending sitting position, drawing your abdominal muscles inward towards your spine is the absolute most effective technique you can learn for your body and your spine stability lifelong. The E for E breathing, yes, even the breathing helps you with ab separation. Research shows that learning to engage the deep core muscles using proper breathing during exercise transforms posture while it protects your other muscles, including your rectus abdominis. So E for E, you exhale on the effort, again, pressing the lower third of your abs toward your spine. The 90 degree leg lowering in fixing your belly pooch has mega benefit too. Here is the ab separation advice when it comes to the 90 degree leg lowering. Maintaining the posture is the key. That's where the muscle work is. The position, getting into the 90 degree leg lowering position is an actual exercise, especially for someone with an ab separation. And it is one of the reasons I loved Sophia's question. When she asked it, I responded to her with, this is fantastic, because it gives me an opportunity to re-emphasize, to make a big deal out of the importance of positioning of every exercise. The 90 degree leg lowering, the position alone on your back with your legs bent, checking to see if there's a space between your back and the surface. And if so, taking the time to use the proper prop beneath your head. The correct height of the prop will biomechanically flatten your back. It may take a few moments to find the right height, but please don't settle for pretty good. Once your back is positioned nicely against the surface, the action is contracting of the lower third of your abs. Your belly button is contracting and it's drawing inward. You're not sucking up. The contraction is drawing inward, so you press toward your spine. The contraction of your lower abs is drawing the rectus abdominis again inward. You see where we're going here? When you draw them inward and you offer them resistance, that over time is the type of workout that will result in helping you improve the ab separation. There absolutely is no benefit going lower with your legs if your back is not plastered into the surface. In answering Sophia's fantastic question was to reinforce a couple things. 
One, position, position, position. And, and two, it may be that unbeknownst to you, you have an ab separation. And knowing that may give you the motivation to keep on keeping on when maybe you feel that you're not progressing fast enough. Now onto the one technique that all of us should be doing to protect ourselves from everyday movements that can make ab separations worse or create them over time. It's actually very simple. Take a day to check in on the things that you most often repeat. Any action where your ab bulges out when you do it is a good thing to look at. And here's an example. How do you get up from a chair? Do you lean forward, let your tummy face downward as you get up? Instead, incorporate the simple self-care action of contracting the lower third of your abs, then get up. Feel the difference? How do you get out of bed each morning? Try getting in the habit of rolling to the side, using your arm, contract your abs, then press up to the seated position. You strengthen your arms, you protect your back, and you work your lower abs immediately. How are you getting in and out of your vehicle? And so on. The one technique throughout the day, whether you're lifting groceries, your grandchild, a huge load of laundry, getting your infant out of the car with the car seat. Oh my God, we used to go through that. Postnatal moms would have their shoulders, their abs, totally destroyed by this action. Incorporating this daily technique is even more important if you find you have a gap. Look at your abs during the exercise. Are they doming? Be very mindful of how you breathe during the exertion parts of exercise in general. The first step in each of these actions is asking yourself, did I use my lower third of the abs? When I'm shoveling, when I'm raking, when I'm lifting huge loads of laundry, am I contracting my lower abs first to avoid overloading internally the stomach wall? If you've had changes in your weight or you know you haven't been using your abs, ab muscles, take the time to train your diaphragm first, then layer on the nine days, five simple exercises. Lastly, if you're a female who had children 10, 20, 30 plus years ago, and you're thinking my separation wouldn't still exist at this point, I can't count the number of times I worked with women whose children were fully grown that did not even know they had a separation until we did the check. Then they used the chair, slowly progressing to the 90 degree positioning. That's what helped them resolve their separation decades later. Over 40 years in this field, there are certain simple things like taking care of an ab separation that can change everything. I am so grateful for Sophia's question. This week's focused action is all about paying attention to your abs. Today, check your abs for separation. Spend the day aware of how you use your body throughout the entire day. Continue the routine, honing in on your current exercise positionings. Never let any part of your lower back come off the floor or slump when you're doing the chair. Always use the exhale and the effort. We never want our abs to dome up in our exercises. Revisit the instructional videos every once in a while for a refresher. Always consult with your practitioner who knows your body. Share the video with them, the exercises. Thanks to all of you sharing videos. See you next week when we layer on final muscle group in the 52 weeks of simple self-care with Mo.